Well, let's get it going to what we're talking about next. Okay, so last legislative session, the school choice voucher debate, it kind of it entered the gem state, kind of came in with a storm, right? Bill brought before lawmakers nearly a year ago was modeled after what passed in Arizona in 2022. A $20 million universal voucher program would give parents $6,000 per student and the freedom to send those students to any school they wish or teach them at home. Questions about accountability, public money being used for private education and taking money away from the state's public school budget, that kind of helped kill the bill in committee. But we knew another version would be back this session, and it has. Last week, Senator Lori Den Hartog from Meridian and Representative Wendy Horman from Idaho Falls, they made it clear they planned to introduce a tax credit program. So not a wide open education savings account where families are cut a check from the state, but a credit families can claim on their taxes to offset the cost of their kids' education. Yes, even a private school education. This version would be capped at $40 million and be on a first come first serve basis. Knowing this would be coming, Idaho Business for Education held a forum on the very first day of the legislative session, that'd be yesterday, to learn lawmakers on the impact a voucher or a tax credit program would have on a state. So who do they turn to to tell this tale? Arizona, who after a full year of offering universal vouchers is facing a $400 million budget shortfall. One year after enjoying a surplus, by the way. But this budget impact isn't something new to Arizona since they've been a playground for school voucher lobbyists since the 1990s. In Arizona, we have had an onslaught of voucher lobbyists who have pushed for vouchers for many, many years. We're talking decades. Beth Lewis, the executive director of Save Our Schools Arizona, spent about an hour Monday explaining to Idaho lawmakers and education advocates why the Grand Canyon state has become the cautionary tale when it comes to the deepening debt created by school voucher programs. I think this graph tells a really good story of what will likely happen in Idaho if you do decide to pass the tax credit voucher. You can see in 1998, the program started as a very small program. It now is set to surpass $300 million in this fiscal year. And those are dollars that never enter our general fund. Much like the educational savings account attempt last session. What do we want? School, School choice. choice. This session. Now. Lawmakers want to give Idaho families more options when it comes to their kids' education and have the state pay for it with a $5,000 tax credit. It's a list of eligible education expenses, including tuition and tutoring, um, transportation, all kinds of things related to education that parents might incur expenses on. Lewis says whether it's a tax credit or a voucher program. And this is not what was projected. Funding is underestimated and accountability is lacking. In our state, you know, the legislation is very subjective. It's written in a wide open manner. And so our ADE is tasked with determining what is educational. Answering questions, Lewis explains why the bang hasn't been worth the buck. Are there states that can point to success? Because I anticipate having these discussions with other folks who might support this. Can they point to states that are seeing success with this kind of program? No, <laughs> no. I mean, all of the data shows that this is not successful. Um, all of the research shows that the academic outcomes are subpar. Well, how do they defend what is happening with the budget? Right now, we're really just seeing a lot of folks putting their heads in the sand um, and just sort of pointing fingers and saying, oh, no, it's just going to pay for itself. It'll be fine. Lewis said and public schools Washington suffer under such programs, especially in remote parts of the state. For her, the question of state supported public education is more about the common good. And a lot of folks will say, well, these are my taxpayer dollars. I should get to have them back and use them as I see fit. You'll hear that. Um, I really like to apply that to fire, public safety, highways. I haven't used the fire department in 10 years. Should I get my money back? Lewis told the room yesterday the average household in Arizona is only putting in about $1,300 a year into the K through 12 general fund. But those in the voucher program, well, they're taking back $7,000 per kid, which is why the universal voucher program in Arizona originally projected to cost $65 million a year. Well, in just two years for 2024, that estimation is nearly a billion dollars. We haven't yet seen the details of what is being proposed in Idaho this session, other than being told about the $5,000 per family, a $40 million cap with another $10 million set aside for low income families. But when that bill is officially introduced in committee, 
we will dig further into it.